Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the Dark World deck, utilizing the new support in the form of Dark World Brainwashing. That card is actually just really solid and really cool, although it doesn't really seem to mesh too well with the Dark World deck as a whole, in terms of it really changes the like ideology of what you should be like trying to do. But I won Rock, Paper, Scissors, as you can see, and I went first, and I actually just couldn't get anywhere. The starter cards in Dark Worlds are actually uh, not really that good <laughs> in terms of the only real starters you have now are actually like Dark World Dealings and, uh, and Drag Down to the Grave, so that's like six cards. And that's a bit unfortunate uh, in terms of how the deck used to be able to function. But So I'm just testing a build that my friend sent me, and uh, he, test he sent me this ignorant build that was, uh, that was like with triple gold, triple silver, and I'm like, alright, I could see this. Uh, because gold and silver are like bigger than beige, so like there's no real reason to like play beige over them, as well as the fact that gold and silver are cards that can constantly recur themselves back to the board and be discarded for Dark World Brainwashing. Now, Dark World Brainwashing is a very interesting card. Uh, it basically operates as an effect negation anywhere. It can negate a card effect on board, or a monster effect on board, rather, monster effect activating in hand, or in grave, or banished. Like, it can, it can negate the effect no matter where it is, because it doesn't even have to destroy the card. And the only thing is that it requires you to have a, a very, like, sort of tight-knit and strenuous amount of uh, resources. You have to have three cards in hand before you even activate it, and a Dark World on the board. So it's just like, uh, it's, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a strenuous activation requirement, if I do say so myself. You probably actually have to maybe start playing the Dark World deck a little bit more in a control variant aspect, and, like, stunish based because of how, like, it operates. Like, it just... It operates very strangely in terms of it doesn't really mesh too well with the theme of the Dark World strategy uh, as a whole, it doesn't seem, but regardless, I am getting pummeled by Gravekeepers, as you can see. Necro Valley is apparently just like way too strong for me to deal with, because I draw the Soul Charge, I have the Gates, which I can't use, and all of this stuff, which is just not, <laughs> not in any way ideal. And now, as you can see, I'm going first in this game uh, as well, and I open like multiple Silvas with this card outs and I've got the field spell but I don't have anything engraved so I'm I'm desperately trying to like draw like snow or brow or grapha off my dark world dealings so I can at least try and advance my draw engine further off of my field spell but that's just not the case and so I know that he has a Regeki in his hand so my options are like make artifact Durandal or make Tiris and I I don't really know if I want to actually do either of those things uh, to be honest with you because even if my stuff dies it will still allow me to like use the field spell next turn if Necro Valley isn't active, but I saw like a terraforming in his hand, I think, so it's definitely something that's gonna be not a, a factor. Like I'm not gonna be able to use my field spell. But the Necro Valley that is being played in this game is actually the new errata in the OCG, and I don't even know if that errata took place in the TCG or not. I haven't checked because Gravekeepers are largely irrelevant um, in terms of how their uh, in terms of how their function works. Although the deck might actually be like some form of like contender on a regional circuit or a local circuit or something, uh, just because Necro Valley is actually really good right now in the format, uh, thinking about it because of Infernoids and, you know, Emerald stop being stopped, so the Zodiac engine has very little, like, recovery power, and the traps are just good that you get to play as well. But, uh, the thing with Necro Valley is that its newest errata is that it negates the effect of any card that would affect a card in the graveyard, and the oldest errata that we had access to in the TCG was that if the card affected itself, it could still be moved under Necro Valley. Um, so, like, things like Gold, Silva, and Beige would be able to special summon themselves uh, under Necro Valley, under the old TCG errata. Um, and, like I said, I don't know if this new errata has come to the TCG or not yet. I know it's in the OCG. Uh, but the new errata negates them outright. Any card that would affect a card in the graveyard, its effect is negated. It's like, wow, that's actually just a super strong errata that I can't, <laughs> can't really deal with. Uh, in any way, shape, or form. And so, as you see, I just literally get beaten down by Gravekeeper monsters because I struggle to get to a starter card, and all my stuff just really seems to be not really working for me. And as you can see, this hand is another hand that's just not really that good. So, there are definitely some changes to the list that I'm definitely, like, looking into doing. Because, like, I, like I've probably said already, the way that this deck seems to want to function when you include something like Dark World Brainwashing and build the deck around it is to operate in more of a stunnish aspect. Um, but the thing is, you definitely just need starter cards. You need more starter cards, like, potentially, like, Fabled Raven or Trance Archfiend is something that probably would be good on, you know, paper, at least. But the problem is still, like, trying to get to something like Snow and Brow to, like, get into your graveyard. Because with Triple Gold, Triple Silva, those cards don't allow you to, like, start, you know, molding your field spell draw engine into an existence. Because they're always going to keep emptying themselves out of the graveyard. I really wish Gold and Silva, Silva had an optional 
uh, Monster Reborn effects, basically. I wish they had optional effects, but their secondary effects are some of arguably the best ones out of the Dark World cards, and if you can resolve them off brainwashing, then it's just game over. Especially since, like, you can discard it off brainwashing, it recycles itself to the board, so you have if you have multiple brainwashings, it's just putting more and more monsters on the board, but then you also have the secondary effect that will be triggered, which allows you to either loop two cards away or destroy two cards on board. Like, they're arguably... Not even arguably, I would just say that they are 100% the strongest ones to discard off Dark World Brainwashing, and that's why they're being played at such a large amount in the deck. Uh, but I'm just getting hit by Full Force Virus <laughs> over and over again. The only card in the deck that doesn't get hit by Full Force Virus is fucking Graffa. And, like, I can't use Gates under Necker Valley, I can't use Dark Smog under Necker Valley, I can't use Soul Charge under Necker Valley, and Dimensional Barrier is dead here because he's playing Gravekeepers. He has a five card extra deck. He's Going into the extra deck is not on his agenda. It's like more of an option that he needs maybe once every once in a while rather than anything else. But I draw Graffa, which is literally the one monster in the deck that I've already said cannot be hit by full force virus. <laughs> but I can't do anything with it. I can't use Dark Smog. I can't use Gates. I can't use Soul Charge. I can't do anything. So this is really strange how this uh, this uh, Great Keeper matchup in the past, the Great Keeper matchup way in the past, like in 2011 when the, uh, the Dark World cards like came out, like 2011, 2012, that area of, uh, of time, like, the Gravekeeper matchup was just free. It was just super free, uh, because you just, you would just get royal attributed, maybe by someone who just was, like, a dumbass, and you just discard your hand. The Necro Rally didn't matter, because you would just always be bringing back Graffas every turn, uh, but now with the deck built as the way it is, it seems like it's, like, an auto loss. <laughs> like, trying to turbo with Dark Worlds just seems like it's not really doing it. Uh, for any way, shape, or form in terms of how you need to play with the deck. But, yeah, it's just... Ah, uh, man, this... this I just got sweeped really, really quickly, and it just... It wasn't a fun time. So there's definitely... There's definitely changes that are going to be made to the build, because this is the build that my friend sent me that you see on screen. There's definitely a lot of things that I think probably need to be changed, because like I said, I think the Dark World deck has potential with brainwashing, especially since it is a searchable trap that can negate monster effects anywhere, and also triggers removal off of gold and silver. So, like, it's definitely a very situational bit of removal, but it's definitely also on the same side of the, on the opposite side of things, it's very, very niche and good in what it's capable of doing um, in terms of molding game states to your favor. It just seems like the deck needs to be played more as like a stunnish aspect, kind of like it was in early like 2012 where it was like triple skill drain, recklesses, and like removal cards, and you were literally just summoning Graffa every turn slowly, and, uh, and you were just getting the game like in your favor turn after turn after turn. Because this whole like trying to turbo into options strategy just seems like it doesn't really mesh well enough with Dark World Brainwashing. And there are definitely cards that support Dark World Brainwashing being really good and easy to access as well, like the Forces of Darkness, which is another trap card. It's not searchable, but you could draw into it and it lets you just add two Dark Worlds from your grave to your hand, which can help you fulfill the requirement Dark World Brainwashing requires of needing three cards in your hand prior to trying to use its negation effect. So there's a lot of different things that could possibly like just roll with the with the possibilities and stuff here. They could make it work and again like trance archfiend and fabled raven are options for starters and stuff like that fabled raven actually sounds really juicy with like a handful of golds and silvas because you can just discard them all and they'll all special summon it. and that's like an otk um because i think fabled raven gains attack points at some point so that's like a bunch of 23s and then fabled raven and then the field spell would give boosts on top of that so there's a lot of different options for like available future deck building but this was a build that like i said a friend sent me because I asked him if he wanted to uh, to do a list for me because I didn't want to take the time to, to figure one out. And he just said, all right, well, this this is meant to just try to be cool and do stuff. And it seems like that's just not the way that it needs to be worked. So I'm going to be changing the list around a bit and we'll go from there. So sorry for the bit of uh, expeditious outro nonsense because it's definitely... Uh, it's definitely uh, something that I'm not a fan of, how I just got swept by Gravekeepers. The slowest deck I could have probably played against, and I wasn't even able to, like, slow my game plan down to stun. And I just didn't get off the ground in any of these games, because starter cards seem to be a problem in terms of, like, the lack of them in this list. There seems to be literally six starter cards, and that is drag downs and allures. But anyway, let me know what you guys' thoughts are in the comments down below. Again, sorry for this sort of expeditious outro, this long expedited outro that just explains all the things that were on my mind but the games weren't long enough to explain that so 
kind of have to do this. But anyway, as always, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that nonsense. Links are in the description to my Facebook page and Patreon link if you want to go there and support me directly and implement some things to happen possibly in the future of the channel. Support me directly as well as get in on a monthly giveaway happening at the end of this month for a box of Raging Tempest. It's all sorts of things that you might want to go check out my Patreon for and to support me if you want to do that sort of thing. It's just, there is an option. But other than that, uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, as always. Thanks for your time, as usual. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. And I'm definitely going to be playing with this deck again, maybe once or twice more, because Brainwashing is such a good card in theory that I want to like test it to its fullest potential. So I'll probably be testing differentiating builds on down the line. But anyway, that's it for this video. As I've already said, take care, guys. Thanks for watching all that nonsense. Have a good day. Bye.